the hidden civilization of the Indus Valley. The Indus Valley civilization flourished around 3300 to 1300 BC and covered a large area spanning Pakistan, Afghanistan and India close to the Indus River. Archaeologists have found that there was once a large community of farmers as well as vast cities. Two conspicuous urban communities that have been unearthed are Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa. They found that a significant number of the houses had their very own wells and restrooms alongside a refined underground waste framework. Archives found in Sumeria recorded business, religious and artistic events occurring in these areas and gives descriptive information in regard to the culture's exotic clothing. The Indus Valley Civilization did use a form of writing, however, to this date it has never been deciphered. It is also conceivable that the mysterious civilization were a secluded and progressed with their very own language and way of life, which is relatively a new discovery. One of the numerous structures revealed is the Great Bath at Mohenjo-Daro, estimated to be around 83 square meters in size, which is thought to have been utilized for custom bathing. The explanation behind the fall of such a great civilization is somewhat misty. Historical researchers have put forward a number of varied speculations, including a severe drought that dried up the local rivers, huge flooding, trading challenges with Mesopotamia, or an attack by an obscure foe. One thing is for sure, very little is known of the civilization and how they came to be. Continued archaeological excavations regularly reveal evidence to support an advanced culture that had knowledge well in advance of many other civilizations around the world. As to who these mysterious people were remains unknown. The Mysterious Kingdom of Aksum Located in northern Ethiopia, the Kingdom of Aksum was a large powerful society with great influence that stretched from the sands of the Sahara in the west to the desert of Arabia in the east. Research carried out at the location has shown that the Aksumites had developed their own language and written text and had numerous trade routes with the eastern Mediterranean. Aksum has been described by several scholars to have been one of four powerful civilizations on the planet during the time of 100 to 940 AD. Despite their power, very little is known about these people. Archaeologists have described this culture as the lost civilization. From what little research has been carried out, it has been discovered that the Aksumite society was well organized and had a hierarchy of noblemen and kings. Surprisingly, in the 4th century AD, the civilization embraced Orthodox Christianity. It is written that a Syrian prisoner befriended the king and had converted his religious beliefs. Later, the Syrian was said to have been made the Bishop of Aksum. This location is also known to be the birthplace of the Queen of Sheba and the original resting place of the Ark of the Covenant. It is written that the Queen of Sheba married King Solomon and had a son called Menelik, who was responsible for bringing the Ark to Aksum. It is said that the Ark of the Covenant now resides in a small guarded church in the area. The Ancient Civilization of Sanliurfa in Turkey Sanliurfa, located in Turkey, was initially referred to as Urfa and has had a long and checkered history, with numerous religions asserting a fondness for the area. It boasts a number of intriguing archaeological highlights. For example, a small cave said to be the place where the prophet Abraham was born. It was viewed as a noteworthy focus of Syrian culture. Situated close to Sanliurfa is the much-talked-about Gobekli Tepe, where large megalithic stones were cut and organized before the known innovations of metal instruments, and 6,000 years before Stonehenge appeared in the UK. Gobekli Tepe might be the site of the world's most established temple. The stones, up to 5 meters tall, were organized in circles, and each weigh somewhere in the range of 7 to 10 tons. The biggest circle is estimated to be around 20 meters in measurement, and a portion of the stones are carved with pictures of animals, for example, lions, vultures, scorpions, and foxes. It is theorized that civilization would have ventured out from Urfa to the sanctuary of Gobekli Tepe for religious functions. However, to date, no proof has been found to indicate what this included. 
Studies of the region carried out by archaeologists suggest that there might be upwards of 16 comparable circles. Shockingly, in 2018, inexpert conservation work damaged portions of the site when concrete was poured over it accidentally. Researchers and authors such as Andrew Collins and others have found evidence that the large stone circles were aligned to the heavens. Like so many other ancient sites around the world, and in particular, the constellation of Cygnus. The Mysterious Konar Sandal Civilization Located in the southern part of Iran, in an area known as Jiroft, is the mysterious ancient site of Konar Sandal. During archaeological excavations in 2002, one of the largest and oldest ziggurats was discovered. The terrace temple complex was partially buried in sand alongside two mounds that when uncovered were two two-story buildings with large walls, very much like some form of fortification. Dating from around 2200 BC, this civilization was certainly structured and had a strong belief in religion and ritualistic ceremonies. Historians believe the ancient site was built by Bronze Age people known as the Arata, which were described in ancient Sumerian writings. However, as to where these people came from remains a mystery. Archaeological excavation specialists believe the Arata to be an independent, autonomous civilization that had their own language and architecture. Like many unguarded ancient sites, it has become subject to looting and unauthorized excavations. It's not known what treasures may have been discovered. The Arata people may have created the oldest known language on Earth. Continued research at the site has revealed evidence of a religious order with agricultural, industrial and domestic dwellings. Archaeologists are continuing to discover new treasures in hope of finding out more about this mysterious civilization. The Strange Vinca Civilization Considered to have one of the most complex writing systems in the world with around 700 characters, the Vinca civilization often scribed onto pottery. Unfortunately, the writings have never been translated. However, specialists believe their language consisted of letters and numbers. The Vinca people were also known as the Danube Valley people and had an incredibly advanced farming system, making them one of the most intelligent Neolithic cultures ever documented. Discoveries belonging to the Vinca civilization have been found along the banks of the Danube River and are thought to have existed some time before the incredible human advancements of Mesopotamia and Egypt. The first archaeological proof was found in 1908 at Belo Brido Hill near Belgrade. The settlements are also thought to have endured over a thousand years before being mysteriously abandoned. Every settlement housed a couple of thousands of individuals in homes made of wattle and clay. They kept livestock and developed crop fields, and even had manufactured plows to help sow oats. Proof has additionally been found of copper utensils, around a thousand years before their general use in Europe, at a location close to Varna, where the spectacular Varna Gold Treasure was found. Dating around six and a half thousand years of age, it is potentially the oldest gold smithy on the planet. The sudden disappearance of the Vinca civilization is a mystery. However, when they did, they appear to have taken their insight and their developments along with them. Ariane Civilization Around 1500 BC, an expansive gathering of travelers, potentially including the remainders of the Indus Valley Civilization, moved to India. It's not known whether this mass relocation was a consequence of escaping from a cataclysmic event or whether it was indeed an invasion. Whatever the reason, another human advancement was conceived on the Indian subcontinent. The Aryan language developed and the new pilgrims created farming. The Aryan human advancement was generally settled by around 1000 BC. The name Aryan originates from the Sanskrit word Arya, which is what the migrants to India call them. Today, there are minimal chronicled events of this development. However, it is referenced in the Vedas as a collection of religious texts with stories of war and numerous clashes. Unfortunately, there is no way of knowing how exact these writings are. There are only a few remaining artifacts and relics from this period in existence, though archaeological research is progressing on a daily basis. The Ancient Civilization of Mirgar in Pakistan 
1974, unearthing started at Mirgar in Pakistan, but the absence of government interest, perpetual plundering of the site, and land erosion has kept Mirgar a moderately shrouded human advancement. Also, archaeological investigation of burrows have been made increasingly troublesome by continuous tribal feuds and poor security for those working at the site. The Mirgar civilization is one of the most oldest human advancements on the planet. Those relics that weren't stolen demonstrate an exceptionally created society with well-established trading with numerous other regions. The civilization is thought to have been in existence around 7000 BC, a huge number of years before the Indus Valley civilization in the equivalent region. The Mirgar people are thought to have had a population of around 25,000, and items used in their everyday life are being found, including signs of incredible dental medical procedures. A huge amount of buildings are still covered by earth and sand. Remains uncovered so far incorporate a complex of well-saved structures produced using mud blocks, and they even had a formal graveyard. Nineveh Civilization Mosul in Iraq was once the home of a flourishing ancient civilization known as the Nineveh. What remains of the ancient sites show signs of being significantly damaged by severe earthquakes that took place thousands of years ago. This vast community continued to grow from 6000 to 612 BC. Nineveh was the capital of the Assyrian Empire and enclosed within a huge wall that circled the city. Their architectural skills were second to none, Constructions were equidistantly designed, such as an 80-room palace, aqueducts, canals, and even parks. Some historical researchers believe that the famous Hanging Gardens of Babylon were actually located in Nineveh itself. The civilization were clearly advanced for their time and had extensive libraries, where over 35,000 inscribed clay tablets have been discovered. One clay tablet tells a story of the biblical Great Flood, which swept the lands and drowned the world of man. There was also reference to a great boat that used a dove to find dry land. As you can imagine, such writings reinforce the biblical story of Noah's Ark at least a thousand years prior to its first appearing in any Hebrew Bibles. Apart from being devastated by severe earthquakes, many of the buildings in Nineveh had been burnt to the ground during Babylonian and Persian attacks. Nineveh was first excavated in 1846 and continued archaeological work occasionally discovering incredible artifacts. The Hidden Norte Chico Civilization The mysterious pre-Columbian civilization in Peru was seemingly the oldest society in the ancient Americas. The people of Norte Chico had mastered huge constructions some of which consisted of pyramids and water distribution across the city. Very little is known about this civilization apart from the amazing architectural abilities. Over the last 30 years, archaeologists have discovered six pyramids to date. The largest is known as Pyramid Maya. In spite their wonder, they are not as detailed as the later Inca designs. Norte Chico settlements were situated north of Lima, and surprisingly the people were one of a few ancient civilizations that appear to have created any form of pottery. According to scholars, the Norte Chico civilization did believe in some form of god or gods, but unfortunately any evidence of writings are yet to be found. It is unknown why, at around 1800 BC, the Norte Chico mysteriously abandoned their homes and fled. No evidence has ever been found to suggest they were involved in any conflicts. Some have theorized their sudden departure was a result of a natural disaster or great drought. The Mysterious Nubia Civilization This ancient civilization once ruled Egypt and was located in the south, close to Sudan, and surprisingly had its own pyramids. Though considerably smaller, there were over 200 of them scattered throughout the ancient city, many of which can still be seen standing today. The kingdom had its very own composed language and culture, and were wealthy in gold. The Nubia civilization had their own images of authority, yet their impact was over when Feru Sneferu assaulted Nubia. Though it was a long way from being a place that is known for status, it turned into an area of Egypt under the pharaoh's control. 
The Nubian individuals, to a great extent, were absorbed into the Egyptian population. However, archaeological proof of their progress remains. Like the Egyptians, they produced pictures of themselves. However, they did on occasion depict themselves as overweight, which is profoundly unusual for any Egyptian images of that time. The Roman Dodecahedrons These hollow Roman dodecahedrons, made of stone and bronze, have sparked much debate as to what they are. There have so far to date been approximately 100 of them discovered. These amazing constructions consist of 12 sides, each with a small circle on each, and each corner has a protruding pega. Archaeologists and scholars have for many years pondered what they could be. Some have suggested that they're nautical devices, candle holders, astrological tools, religious objects, agricultural equipment to help sow seeds, and even an item used to calibrate water pipes. In all, no one really knows for sure what they are. It's also been speculated that the mysterious objects weren't Roman at all, and in fact religious relics taken from the Druids during the Roman invasion of Britannia and Caledonia. The Devil's Bible Known as the Codex Gigas, the Devil's Bible is a monstrous medieval tome, written in the 13th century by a priest who was said to have made an arrangement with the Devil so as to complete it. As per legend, the priest has been condemned to be walled up alive as discipline for breaking his promise to God. The book is said to be manufactured from over 160 creature skins and requiring two individuals to try and lift it. The Codex Gigas contains the total Latin interpretation of the Bible along with therapeutic equations, messages on expulsions and an extensive delineation of the devil himself. Twelve pages of the first original copy are mysteriously missing, and they may have contained startling information. The book is said to have a full-page image of Lucifer, the fallen angel, which gives the book its nickname and its sinister reputation. The devil is shown crouching, as if ready to jump out of the page with a green face, small red eyes, red horns, claws, and two red tongues like a serpent. Rumors suggest that the pages contained mysterious satanic writings and the technique for conjuring the devil himself. The Sahame Lines The Sahame Lines in western Bolivia are a progression of monstrous illustrations scratched into the earth, numbering into the thousands. They were first discovered in 1932 and are 3 to 10 feet wide and a cover a vast area of 8,700 square miles and seemingly make up a web-like plan. They have been listed as the largest archaeological discovery in the Andes and may in fact be the largest in the world, dwarfing the known Nazca lines in comparison. Scientists are baffled as to what they represent. Researchers have concluded that they were initially made by the indigenous individuals who lived close to the volcanic region known as the Sahamar Spring, an expulsion of gushing lava, however, for no good reason. Some have guessed that they were utilized for religious purposes or astrological references, while others believe that the lines have secret hidden meanings. Like the Nazca lines of Peru, the geoglyphs were most likely created through the process of scraping away the dark, oxidized rock on the surface to reveal a lighter surface beneath. No one knows for sure why these people took the time and effort to pave such seemingly illogical criss-crossing trails onto a plateau. The Rongo Rongo Writings Steeped in mystery, Easter Island is one of the strangest places on Earth. It is home to the huge stone Maui statues that gaze upon the skies and ocean. There are those who believe that the entire island was once used by extraterrestrials as a means to communicate with the ancient civilization that once lived there. But there's still another mystery, one that is linked to the famous Polynesian lands, a mind-boggling arrangement of glyphs believed to be one of the earliest forms of communication by means of writing symbols rather than characters. First found by Eugene Arod in 1864, the glyphs are said to date back to around 1200 BC and include symbolism like that of different religious signs found throughout a large area. Until this point, researchers have not had the capacity to decide precisely what the glyphs state or their connection to any outside societies. The glyphs were cut into wood 
utilizing small shards of shark teeth. Such writings have never been deciphered and may hold answers to the island's mysterious past. The Underwater Ruins of Japan Submerged off the shoreline of Yongagunijima is Japan's very own Atlantis, a large submerged city accepted to be no less than 5,000 years of age. First found by a diver in 1955, the city was at first thought to be just an odd arrangement of bizarre-shaped rock formations, all of which strangely included flawless right-angle points and straight lines. Later discoveries uncovered everything from a huge stone passage to cut stairways and lanes to vaulting towers. The Japanese government does not officially accept the discovery as an ancient site, it has become known as the City of the Jomon. Individuals, specialists speculate that the city didn't actually fall into the ocean like the famous Atlantis stories, but rather ended up submerged as ocean levels ascended over thousands of years. Divers have also identified quarry marks in the stone, rudimentary characters etched onto carved faces, and rocks sculptured into the likeness of animals. One such example is that of a sphinx that resembles a Chinese or ancient Okinawan king. As researchers keep on examining the submerged site, many trust this specific site could hold key data to other hidden submerged communities around the globe. Laos Plain of Jars In the northern Xinquan territory of Laos, an unusual gathering of vast round items litter the countryside. These mysterious stone cylinders are accepted to be more than 2,000 years of age. They received relatively little Western attention until the 1930s, when a French archaeologist by the name of Madeleine Colani began surveying the area. Though there were reports that the cylinders had items with them such as carnelian beads, jewelry and axes, the site was mostly looted by the time Colani arrived. The mysterious cylinders found at the location, known as the Plain of Jars, are thought to have some connection with an antiquated burial service ceremonies. These mysterious constructions are made of sandstone and weighing something approximately a ton each. These items are in a region which endured significantly during the American Secret War. Many of the cylinders were broken and damaged by rockets. No one really knows for sure what the cylinders were used for, only that they are extremely old. Today, visitors are not permitted to enter these locations and they're guarded by high fences. The Mysterious Giant Stone Spheres Huge stone spheres in Daiquas Delta, Costa Rica have been baffling archaeologists for many years. They were first discovered by the United Fruit Company whilst cutting down jungle to make way for fruit trees. These mysterious stone constructs are perfectly spherical to the millimeter and range in size up to 2 meters in diameter and weigh as much as 16 tons. These spheres are man-made items shaped from the molten stone known as granodiorite. A large number of these structures have been transported to different prominent areas in Costa Rica as well as purchased by wealthy businessmen. During the early excavations of forest lands in Los Angeles to make way for the railroads, hundreds of spheres were dragged from the ground using cranes and pulleys. In some cases, so many were found that the local Los Angeles newspaper reported them as fossilized dinosaur eggs. To date, the purpose of the spheres have remained unexplained. Similar stone spheres have also been found around the world, in China, Bolivia, Russia, New Zealand and Malta. Perhaps the most unusual one is the sphere of Easter Island. Only one has been discovered inside a stone circle and found at the center of the island. In 1838, while working in what is currently Iraq, German paleontologist Wilhelm Koenig found various clay containers, each concealing an iron bar encased in a copper barrel. Koenig distributed a paper in which he revealed that he had discovered antiquated batteries or galvanic cells. Many believed that they represented an astonishing innovative advancement given the age of the cylinders. The batteries are dated to the Parthian time, around 200 BC. Elizabeth Stone, a specialist in Iraqi antiquities and archaic exploration, has stated that many historical researchers do not buy into the battery hypothesis. Regardless of the restriction to Koenig's hypotheses, Smith College art history educator Dr. Marjorie Senecal 
as understudies fabricate reproductions of the cylinders which delivered voltage when filled with citric acid squeezed from fruit. Speculations as to why batteries were needed are varied. However, the most popular theory is that the battery charge assisted in the process of electroplating other metals with gold. The electroplating process uses a small electric current to put a thin layer of one metal, such as gold, onto the surface of another, such as silver. Researchers suggest that many ancient artifacts in museums that are thought to be gold may actually be gold-plated silver. Author and investigator Eric von Deineken has theorized that batteries may have been used to light primitive filaments to cast light into the temples by the Egyptians whilst they carved their hieroglyphics into the walls as there was no sign of any smoke damage on the ceilings should they have used firelight and clearly no sunlight would have reached many of the temple chambers. While it's genuinely regular to name the Egyptian pyramids the stuff of antiquated secrets, it's something totally new to find comparative structures all around the globe. Such is the situation with the pyramids of Argolis, Greece, and their most popular structure, the Helenikon Pyramid. Unlike many other pyramids, the structure's base is rectangular rather than square, and the steeply inclined sides are made of various sized blocks that fit together like a crazy jigsaw puzzle similar to the pre-Incan walls of Peru. It is built of locally quarried grey limestone, though its vertical base partly incorporates the rocky outcrop of the hilltop on which it stands. The base has a further anomaly. The southeastern corner of the pyramid is replaced by a recess that gives access to a narrow passageway which in turn leads to a doorway. This is the main entrance to a single chamber with vertical internal walls. The room is about 7 meters square, and though its walls do not reach full height, it's clear that the ceiling would have been well below the apex of the pyramid. The genuine reason for the Helenikon remains obscure. While the riddle of what was inside the Helenikon is unquestionably captivating, what really interests scholars is the way it was evidently built in 2720 BC, making it altogether much older than any of the Egyptian pyramids. That is, if the Egyptian pyramids have been correctly aged. It's also no surprise to find that the Helenikon was like many other pyramids, aligned to the stars. The Hypogeum of Hal Salflani The Hypogeum of Sal Salflani was not by any means found until 1902. It has been thought to be a burial place or sanctuary, but as time has passed, it seems to have been used for much more mysterious undertakings. The only preserved example of a subterranean labyrinth architecture in Europe, the Hypogeum was used from 4000 to 2500 BC and consisted of three complex levels cut out of the bedrock with painted walls of ornate design. The most puzzling part of the building is a peculiar chamber referred to as the Prophet Chamber, in which words spoken at an ordinary volume were enhanced a hundred times and capable of being heard all through the whole structure. The chamber is also precisely tuned to 111 Hz, making it resonate when that specific tone is vocalized. While sitting in the center of the chamber, the 111 Hz can scientifically be proven to heal internal and external wounds up to six times faster. Seemingly, our ancient ancestors had knowledge of sound frequency healing. The Hypogeum remains one of the world's unknown ancient mysteries. Top 10 Legends of the Great Flood Number 10. Baby Rocks The Greek god Zeus was not pleased with mankind. He considered humans to be selfish and worse, they had stopped worshipping him. In his thoughts, this was a complete disaster. He'd originally given the job of creating humans to Prometheus, who had made them from clay. Dissatisfied, Zeus decided to flood the earth and start all over again. He approved Prometheus' son, Deucalion, and told him about his planned flood. Obviously, Deucalion was rather distressed about the situation, but kindly, Zeus said he'd build him a boat so that he could survive. And, as a bonus, Deucalion could take his wife, Pyrrha, with him. The flood came, and humanity was wiped out. After the waters had receded, the boat ended up resting on top of a mountain. Zeus instructed Deucalion to throw bones of your mother over his shoulder and thus 
we create humanity. This puzzled Deucalion, but eventually he realized that mother meant the earth and that bones meant rocks. Deucalion and his wife began throwing rocks around which magically turned into babies, and thus all nasty humans were wiped out, leaving only good ones descended from rocks. That's us. Everyone out. What happens when gods go on strike? Answer, it doesn't end well. In ancient times, according to a Babylonian clay tablet, some of the lesser gods were given the job of creating the Earth's rivers by digging them out, themselves. After a while, they became rather fed up and went on strike. The chief god, Enlil, decided to create humans to take over the job. He took some clay and the blood of a goddess and assembled us. This arrangement worked well for a thousand years. However, Enlil became irritated. Apparently, we were rather noisy, and he commanded Namtar, the god of diseases, to create a plague and wipe us all out. A hero, Atrahatis, after whom the myth is named, was visited by Enki, the god of the sea. He suggested that Atrahatis pray to Namtar, asking him to stop. Luckily, he arranged for everyone to join in his prayers, and Namtar became so annoyed by the commotion that he ended the plague. All seemed well, but we carried on being noisy, and Enlil, the original phonophobic, decided to wipe us all out by himself. Drought was his preferred method. Unfortunately, after six years of famine, we resorted to cannibalism. Enki, the god of the seas, tried providing us with fish, but this really annoyed the chief god, Enlil, who decided to wipe out all of humanity with a flood. Enki squealed on him and told Atrahatis and his family to save themselves by building a huge boat and filling it with animals and plants. For seven days and seven nights, the rain poured down and the earth was flooded and the rest of humanity was drowned. The mother goddess was horrified. She and the chief god, Enlil, had a meeting and a compromise was worked out. Atrahatis and his wife could start repopulating the planet, but only on condition that she invented miscarriages and stillbirths to keep the numbers down. And in addition, she agreed that there could be the occasional natural disaster too. Plagiarism isn't anything new. The famous American satirist Tom Leher wrote many exceptionally funny and biting songs. One has the memorable lines, plagiarize, plagiarize. Let no one else's work evade your eyes. But plagiarism isn't anything new. The epic of Atrahatis that we've just looked at was probably first written down about 20,000 years ago, and it has been plagiarized throughout the ages, including, as it appears, by the writers of Noah's Ark and millennia before that in the famous Epic of Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh was a Sumerian hero. He traveled the world searching for the secret of immortality. He met a very old man, Utnapishtim, who told him that the gods had flooded the earth when he was a young man many centuries before. The gods were angry about the sinning of humans, so they decided to wipe out mankind. Their plan was to flood the entire earth. Luckily for Utnapishtim, the god Ea warned him of their plan. Ea said to Utnapishtim that he and his family were the only ones worth saving as they were without sin. Ea instructed him to build a boat to save himself and his family, and also the seed of all living things. Ea did as he was asked, and after the floods had receded, the boat landed on a mountain. Utnapishtim released a dove, a swallow, and a raven to find land. They did, and the couple set about repopulating the earth. As a pledge that the gods would never again flood the earth, the god Ishtar created a rainbow and placed it in the sky. Little Thunder Blows It Plagiarism, the sequel Nearly every Native American tribe has a near-identical story of the Great Flood. Apparently, the creator gods were so disgusted by human behavior that they decided to start over. They sent a great flood. Researcher Paul Goebel, who died in 2017, 
was a recognized expert on Native American culture. He was so respected that he was adopted by the Yakima and Sioux tribes and was given the name Little Thunder. Unfortunately, he showed that these stories had been influenced by Christian colonists who forced the Native Americans to integrate the story of Noah's Ark into their mythology. Number 6. Spider Woman to the Rescue The Hopi, a very important Native American tribe, have a complex religious and mythological tradition going back centuries. In it, the sun spirit Tawa was the creator god. He first created the first world out of endless space. Then, so too Nang, his nephew, and ordered him to bring nine universes into existence. Then, the hard-being woman of the West and the hard-being woman of the East, who in turn created humans. And finally, Spider-Woman, who was his messenger. According to one of the many legends, Tawa was unhappy with the inhabitants of the Third World. They behaved immorally, and more importantly, they had stopped worshipping him. So, he sent a great flood to destroy the world and all of its people. Luckily, Spider-Woman came to the rescue. She sealed all the virtuous people in hollow reeds which floated above the rising waters. Eventually, the reeds drifted to the shores of a small island. But when the Hopi clambered out of their makeshift boats, all they could see was water, stretching endlessly into the distance. They found a very tall reed growing by a river and climbed to the top. But it was the same story. Water, water everywhere. Spider-Woman told them to make more reed boats and island hop, gathering food at each one. They did this until they came to the mountains of the fourth world, and as the water subsided, they settled and repopulated the entire planet. A Kindly Fish A flood story, which does not involve a god's punishment, comes from the Hindu culture. One day, King Manu was washing his hands in a bowl. In it, he found a tiny fish, which spoke to him, asking him to save it. The king was noted for his kindness, and so put the fish in a large jug of water. Next day, King Manu noticed that the fish had doubled in size, so he moved it to a tank. This continued, day after day, transferring the fish into larger and larger tanks until the fish was so massive that the king had to release it into the ocean. Before the fish swam to freedom, it spoke again. It said that, actually, it was one of the avatars of the god Vishnu. For the king's kindness, Vishnu warned him that there was going to be a terrible drought which would be followed by intense rain and flooding. The god told King Manu to build a huge boat for himself, his family, all types of plant and a pair of every animal. As prophesied, the floods came. And as they receded, the boat settled on top of a mountain and together Manu and his wife repopulated the earth. Myth proved true. Is there any proof of any such flood in ancient times? Yes, but in a limited way. 3,000 years ago, there was a great flood in China. It began with an earthquake near Lajia in the northwestern province of Qinghe. It caused a landslide of rocks from the nearby mountains, which blocked the Yellow River, flooding across the land. Many people died in the earthquake. Indeed, it was not unlike Pompeii. Archaeologists have found bodies of Lagia's inhabitants, previously going about their normal activities, perfectly preserved under sediment. Unfortunately, the situation got worse. Following a year of heavy rainfall, the natural dam burst again, killing far more people with what must have felt like an apocalyptic flood. The Emperor Yu spent over 20 years having the Yellow River diverted. He invested heavily in helping the survival people of that region to restore the lands and start farming again. The story of the flood spread throughout ancient China, but for a long time it was dismissed as merely a myth. However, recent investigations of the local rock formations have proved that indeed the flood did happen. Floods of Laughter We sometimes talk of being in floods of laughter, it may originate from the native inhabitants of Australia, the Aboriginals. They strongly believe in world energy and the importance of balance. One day, during a drought, a frog, whose name was Tidalik, was so thirsty that he swallowed all the world's water and caused a drought. 
an eel, trying to save the world, performed a wriggly dance in front of Tidalik to make him laugh. He did, and all the waters gushed out. Unfortunately, this flood drowned most of the world's population. A messy beginning. Most of the flood stories are about rainwater. One from Norse mythology is about a flood of blood. According to Norse mythology, Ymir was the first entity to exist in the universe. He was a frost giant. All the other giants descended from him and all the gods from them. Ymir became evil and his grandsons, Ve, Vili and Odin, decided to kill him. So much blood flowed from his corpse that all the other giants were drowned, all but one who had survived by building a boat for him and his family. The grandsons then made the earth from Ymir's chopped up body. The seas were made of his blood and sweat, the mountains from his bones, the trees from his hair, and they used his skull to make the sky, with clouds fashioned from his brains. The brothers then found two logs and made people out of them. One of these humans had two beautiful children who were called Sun and Moon. Unfortunately for them, the gods were so jealous of their beauty that they threw them into the sky. The brothers then invented the rainbow, which they used as a pathway between the earth and heaven. The origin of the mountains. Apparently, hunting isn't much fun if it's too easy. In Filipino mythology, two sons of the great spirit Lumawig complained that hunting was just too easy. They complained that the earth had no mountains or hills that would have made hunting more challenging and fun. So in anger, they flooded the earth using their magical powers. Lumawig was furious that his creation had been destroyed. He looked around the earth and found a brother and sister who'd been stranded on a tiny island. He gave them his dog as a companion and his deer for food. Lumawig then dried out the earth with fire and to his horror, discovered that his perfectly smooth earth had been sculpted by the torrents of water to form mountains and valleys. But in the end, he decided that it looked quite nice that way. Thank you for watching the Universal Top 10s. Please like, share and subscribe to our channel.